I'm the coach. You're locked into the NFL on EA Sports. Ahead, we'll see the runner-up and rookie of the year balloting Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns as they match up with the Red Rifle, Andy Dalton, and the Cincinnati Bengals. With that, let's get up to Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati. For the call, we bring in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. On a chilly December afternoon, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio. This crowd loves their orange and black. The scene just a short time ago, they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. We're ready for football as the Bengals get set to do battle with the Cleveland Browns. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and we've got an AFC North tilt here. And this is a division coming into 2019 where maybe you're saying, is there a changing at the guard at the top? And if so, could it be a team that possibly we haven't talked about in a long time? Could it be the Cleveland Browns? Because they are the trendy pick right now with the young quarterback Baker Mayfield, the acquisition of Odell Beckham Jr., and so many other great moves that they've made along the way. Can they now move to the top of the leaderboard ahead of Baltimore, Pittsburgh, and Cincinnati? They believe they can. Here's the former Sooner, Austin Seibert, to get this one started. And we are underway from Cincinnati. This will be fielded at the 8. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Out come the Bengals, and leading them is the same man that's led them since 2011, their second leading passer in franchise history, and that's Andy Dalton. opening play. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Yeah, the guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. A throwing to start the drive, but that went incomplete. And a look now at the Cincinnati offense. Out of the backfield is Joe Mixon, and he was a valuable commodity coming out of the University of Oklahoma because of his ability to be so versatile. Can run it inside with power, gets to the perimeter and can outrun people, catches the ball not only out of the backfield, but you can split him out just like he would be a receiver. And I think that if he wanted to dedicate himself, he'd be an all-pro kick returner. So line of scrimmage, still the 39 on second and 10 to throw again, Dalton. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, but they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. And here's the starting crew defensively for Cleveland. And there's the always eager to get to the quarterback edge rusher, Olivier Vernon, who came over to the Cleveland Browns in the Odell Beckham Jr. trade. Yes, we always talk about OBJ, but Olivier Vernon helps give Cleveland a great bookend at the defensive end position with Miles Garrett, both of them chasing the quarterback. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. This will be Dalton again. He's going to loft one deep left side here. That's caught at the 25. What a play that turns out to be, 36 yards. All right, Charles, let me put you in the head of one of those defenders out there. You have a big play like that go against you so early. What Does that shake your confidence? It shouldn't, but it often does because your thought process all during the week is how you're going to get after that offense and make your plays. And when they make one against you, it makes you a little bit hesitant. Time to regroup. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 25-yard line. And again, Andy Dalton 
to throw. And the catch good. It's Eifert. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter, it's a good running back dive play. Looking to throw again on second down. Dalton throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Tyler Boyd, the former Pitt Panther, was the target. And that takes us from second to third down. He's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. So Dalton now. He's got his man here. It's green. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate, gotten the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, that's be pinpoint here. I was, I was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. This is Joe Mixon, fourth in the NFL in rushing last season. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. Only a yard on the pickup there, second and goal. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. On second and goal. Dalton, and he's got his big tight end, Eifert, and it's a Bengal touchdown. A five-yard touchdown catch, and the Bengals take it right down and score on the opening drive. They got to love that. Nine-play drive results in six points. That means they're doing the dictating. That means that they've described how the game's going to go. They're playing at their tempo, at their pace. If you're on the other side of the ball, if you're playing defense, defense is not methodical. They've got to go in there and shake things up and create a little havoc. On for the point after is Randy Bullock. And he's got it to make it 7-0 Bengals. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. will send this one away after the touchdown. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here are the Browns under their new head coach, Freddie Kitchens. They will be led out by the Heisman Trophy winner from 2018 from Oklahoma, Baker Mayfield. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now the third leading rusher among rookies last year, it's Nick Chubb. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Big yardage there for the Browns, 18. They had three tight ends in on that set, and they were really good at blocking for their running back. And give them a lot of credit because in football nowadays, tight ends coming out of college often don't block very often. These guys have really developed into superior blockers, and that's why they use them in this formation so often. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. A run for Nick Chubb. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. 
That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. Let's meet the offense. Greg Robinson. Very, very talented. What a man to set your offensive line with. Greg Robinson can do it all. Tremendous athleticism, great strength, just coming into his own. A nickel look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. Baker Mayfield, in all likelihood, is going to be seeing a lot of these Cincinnati Bengals in the coming years twice a season. And he got off to a great start last year as a rookie against Cincinnati. Seven touchdown passes, no interceptions, and two wins. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 46. Chubb on the counter. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Every year I go to the combine to marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. Second and 13, Mayfield, and nearly an interception here on their opening drive. But instead, third down. And the Bengals starting defensive unit now. Strong safety Sean Williams really bounced back from injuries in previous seasons to post one of the best years of his NFL career. Five interceptions in 2018, led the league in interception return yards, provides great veteran leadership, and some real thump coming from his spot in the secondary. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, Mayfield. And that will be incomplete. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. On fourth down, here's Jamie Gillen on to punt. Alex Erickson, deep for Cincinnati. The Bengals bring pressure, and it's blocked. It's picked up. Remember, the ball is live. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. And he will score. Touchdown, Cincinnati, as his guys are in for six. And the Bengals, they widen their lead. Partners, you well know every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there. Doesn't matter. The play happens, and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block. Here's Bullock now for the extra point. And it's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. Able to get the pressure, get a paw on it, knock it down, and then go and grab it and take it into the end zone. What a play.
Now Bullock will send this one away after the touchdown. This fielded at the two. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. The Cleveland Browns, 6-7 and seven on the season. Their offense coming back onto the field here, Charles. But at 6-7, and seven, they actually still have a slim shot at making the playoffs, getting their fourth straight win at home in Week 14 with a victory over Cincinnati. Nick Chubb did his, his thing again, over 100 yards. He leads the league in rushing. Look, we know about the off-the-field issues. Those continue a lot of the headlines. What are those? But, I haven't heard of them. Well, let's not talk about them. But, and again, believe it or not, there is a chance that this team could make the playoffs. And you know, in the NFL, there's a pretty rich history of teams that maybe seem like there's turmoil there, but finding ways to win, right? Nothing was ever calm in Oakland during their heyday, was it? Let's go! But they found ways to win, and they went to a Super Bowl and won it. Cleveland's hoping to take some of that and apply it this year. But how about what they have down the stretch now? Two games back in the wild card. They would need to run the table, get some outside help, right? They're going to need to lose, but Tennessee has to lose. Pittsburgh has to lose. But they're at Arizona, host Baltimore at Cincinnati. No reason that they can't win two of those three. And depending on where Baltimore is, may have a shot at them if Baltimore's in a position where they don't have to have that game. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Chubb. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter. And a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Here's Mayfield. This is the tight end to Joku. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Trying to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Fourteen nothing the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Chubb. He'll get forward for three down to the 16-yard line. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Mayfield throwing quickly out to Beckham. And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And it'll be third and 10 now. now. That was well defended. And as a cornerback, what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen, either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms, or you're going to have to fight your way through it by getting through some blocking. That was a really nice play there. A nickel look now for the Bengals as they try to stop him here on third down. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. 
Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. So on fourth down, out comes the Browns kicker, Austin Seibert. It'll be from the right hash, and it'll be a 36-yarder. Seibert's kick is good. And they will get themselves on the board here at 14-3. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point, piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. After the made field goal, Seibert back out there to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Cincinnati's offense coming back out here. It's a 1-12 Bengals team, and there were some good things that happened in the Week 14 game against Cleveland, even though it was a loss for Cincinnati. A season-high total in yards, 451, and winning the turnover battle for the first time this season. But despite that, they couldn't stack another win on top of their Week 13 victory. So after you've given the good stuff, let's temper it with where they really are. That was their 10th straight loss in the AFC North. Now guaranteed to finish last in the division for the second straight season. Remember when they were a perennial playoff team? Hard to believe they've fallen this far, this fast. Next up, they host New England. Then they're at Miami. Then home against Cleveland again to close out this season. And then they look forward to the NFL draft. Check, 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 check. Check. Now a first carry for Giovanni Brown. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else he'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. Despite only needing one, Dalton to throw. Got a man, it's Ross, complete. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Third down turns to first with that five-yard pickup. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Dalton gives to Bernard. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Off the play fake to Mixon. This is Dalton. And the catch made, it's Tyler Boyd. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 37. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Andy Dalton now, 7 of 10 here in this first half, and he's got a first and 10. Now Bernard. And he'll snag about five yards down to the 32. 
frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Second and five now. Dalton throwing middle, but it's incomplete. By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, and we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual I know. for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to under heavy pressure and down goes Dalton on the sack. The D tackle Sheldon Richardson came barreling in for the sack. We've got a 14-3 ball game with two minutes left in the opening half. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. <laughs> they weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. A first down throw from Mayfield. I think most quarterbacks would love to have the goal line actually extend up into the air and turn into a wall. And they can put their back against it and know exactly where they are on the field so they don't end up in the end zone. Didn't do it on that play, but perilously close to the goal line. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. They run. Chubb. And he'll get him a little bit of breathing room across the five to the six-yard line. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Now Chubb, and a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. The Bengals gonna use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Jamie Gillen now, on for his second punt, and remember his first one was blocked. Erickson now to return. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. They've got the lead, last time had to punt it though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. Passing. It's Dalton. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. 
So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Watch the run. Watch the run. Watch the run. Watch the run. Throwing again. Dalton. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Sheldon Richardson picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Well, it was second long. Now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. So the sack, and now it's third and long for Dalton and the Bengals. Dalton with a give here to Mixon. And they'll bring him down right at midfield, and he is well short of the first down. Give him nine on the carry, but it's not enough, and it'll be fourth down. Well, the guys who are paid to make the tackles deserve some kudos there, but I think they deserve even bigger ones because in that situation, they had to be thinking pass. Loosened up defense, going to pass coverage. Instead, maybe they surprised him a little bit running the ball, yet they rallied to it and stopped him well short of a first down. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted. Spotted at the 14-yard line. So we have reached halftime here in an 11-point contest. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is taken at his four. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Now Hunt. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Defense is always talking about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Win first down so that can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. On second and nine, Mayfield. He's got Njoku, his big tight end. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Big yardage there for the Browns, 18. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. I got 
They go play action. Mayfield, his throw incomplete. He was looking to get it to Jarvis Landry that time. And now it's second down. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined. But sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. Now here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. That was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Mayfield now from the 50. And he's going to be swallowed up. Sacked back at the 45-yard line. Sam Hubbard making his presence felt in the backfield. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Here's Jamie Gillen now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. Let's go. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Hey, how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some <laughs> gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. So here's Dalton and the Bengals now, first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he's swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. Sheldon Richardson there to make the play. This defense could use a few more plays like that right now. It certainly could, but think about it from an offense's perspective right now. They've got a lead, but they don't want to throttle down too much and stall themselves. Still want to move at a nice pace. Let's go, D. Looking to throw on second down. Dalton, this one complete to Giovanni Bernard. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. Mixon with a first down carry. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Tighten up, tighten up. Pull together. Play action now, Dalton. Now he'll escape to his left. He's going to take off with it. And he'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. Now that was a whole lot of open space out in front of him, wasn't it? I'm telling you, Brandon, when things are going right, they are going right. And everything has been going their way for the most part. I saw that lane start to develop. Boom, he took advantage of it. A pair of first downs gives him a first and 10 up at the 44. Rush in, rush in, rush in. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. 
and that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. To throw again, Dalton. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for his favorite target, A.J. Green, that time. And it's third down. And now offensively, it's third and ten. And I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller's thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. Open man is lost complete. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 36. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? It takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 36. And Dalton to throw toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. John Ross, the one he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. So you got a young quarterback, you know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back on what they know best, their arm. He's, he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide open target, but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy. And a solid run down inside the 30. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. Again, here's Bernard. It's a pickup of three, but it brings up what will be an interesting fourth and one. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Here's Randy Bullock now as he'll go for the field goal. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. And Bullock will put this one through, and they will stretch the lead now to 17-3. to So he splits the uprights, and has to be a nice feeling. Right when it left his foot, knew it was good. Yeah, just like a good three-point shooter in basketball, right? Release the ball, fall back on defense without even looking. You know it's going in the hoop. Well, it's no secret. That's why they have him return punts. He has the capability to take him back, and he did so there. After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. This is taken at his four. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, <laughs> all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Uh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, if some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. And, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. One advantage having an elite guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. 
Now Mayfield. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Nick Chubb, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. To throw Mayfield. And that is incomplete. Had to pass there, third and long on your own side of the field. Just couldn't come up with anything. That's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs, meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long, the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down, even throwing the football. Here's Jamie Gillen now as he's on to punt for Cleveland. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. Here comes Erickson. Call that one an even 60 yards, 6-0. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, run what you do best. The gas. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns that first down completion only netted him three second and seven on the draw here's Bernard and still about three yards shy of a first as the four yard pickup brings it to third down you can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself, and that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. They'll run again with Bernard. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Face mask. Defense. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration. Not a good play. Maybe a critical mistake at this juncture is now they've got Let's a first go and ten. Let's go, defense. Right, here we go. After the penalty, it's Mixon. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. And I think we can get used to seeing more of that in this fourth quarter, especially if they're having success on the ground like they did there. Yeah, I think back when we met with the head coach in, in preseason, and all he talked about was building a bully. And I think it was this situation he was envisioning. Trying to ice a game, plenty of time left, but being able to give the ball to his big runner and pound away and try and finish off a game. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. Mixer. Flash the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stop short of the 35. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Ten yards there on a Bengal first. 
Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys, they're just saying, let's just keep running it at them. We've got them now. Just like that. Just like that. Oh, what a move. They get just two out of it there, and it's second down. A gain of two brings up second and eight at the Browns 25 yard line. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. And now to the air, Dalton dumps it off to Mixon. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. And the Bengals on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This will be third and five. A draw play, Bernard. And he's going to be taken down here, still a couple yards short of the first. Give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down. Now that was a big time play by the defense. They as well knew where the first down line was, and they didn't let him get anywhere near it. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. This to make it a three-score game late. Bullock's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 17. So with that, you figure, yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down. But don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen, and you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Now, aren't I, though? After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And the Browns getting set to go. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Mayfield to throw it. He's got Njoku over the middle. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Down under two minutes to go in this football game. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Geno Atkins breaking through to get him to the ground. It's a loss of seven. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Throwing on second and long. Mayfield. Got a man. That's Rashard Higgins. 23 yards the pick up there. It's a game of 23 yards. First down, Browns. Check right, check right. Check tight right, tight right, tight right. Solo out there, check out. 
First down, Mayfield. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Throwing again, Mayfield on second and 10. And he's got the hook up to Landry. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. That's just his second catch of the game. They wanted to keep him silent. They have kept him silent. Defensive football 101. Don't let the best player on offense beat you. Take him out of the game. They've done a great job of doing that. The last play on the completion got him half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone, eventually that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. No move to get the offense off the field. They're going on fourth and five. Mayfield to throw for it on fourth. Trying to get it to Beckham, and it's intercepted. William Jackson with a pick. too much extracurricular there. When you have a game with a lot of contact, tensions are going to run pretty high. You're going to be emotional, but you have to harness it somehow, and he didn't on that play. And he'll go down here at the 12 yard line. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. They'll get this out wide to Boyd. That is brought down. So this one in the win column now for the Cincinnati Bengals. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. It's a win for the Bengals as we say so long from Cincinnati.